Sibilance is a manner of articulation of fricative and affricate consonants, made by directing a stream of air with the tongue towards the sharp edge of the teeth, which are held closed together. A consonant that uses sibilance may be called a sibilant, or a strident. Examples of sibilance are the consonants at the beginning of the English words sip, zip, ship, chip, and dump, and the second consonant in vision. The symbols in the International Phonetic Alphabet used to denote the sibilant sounds in these words are, respectively, S, Z, T, D. More specifically, the sounds T, D, as in chip and jump, are affricates, whereas the rest are fricatives. Sibilants have a characteristically intense sound, which accounts for their non-linguistic use in getting one's attention. In the alveolar hissing sibilants, S and Z, the back of the tongue forms a narrow channel to focus the stream of air more intensely, resulting in a high pitch. With the hushing sibilants, such as English, T and D, the tongue is flatter, and the resulting pitch lower. Because all sibilants are also stridents, the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. However, the terms do not mean the same thing. The English strident S, F, V, S, Z, T, D. The English sibilants are a more high-pitched subset of the stridents. The English sibilants are per second, Z, T, D, F, and V, are stridents, but not sibilants, because they are lower in pitch. Stridency refers to the perceptual intensity of the sound of a sibilant consonant, or obstacle fricatives, affricates, which refers to the critical role of the teeth in producing the sound as an obstacle to the airstream. Non-sibilant fricatives and affricates produce their characteristic sound directly with the tongue or lips etc., and the place of contact in the mouth, without secondary involvement of the teeth. The characteristic intensity of sibilance means that small variations in tongue shape and position are perceivable, with the result that there are a large number of sibilant types that contrast in various languages. Acoustics Sibilants are louder than their non-sibilant counterparts, and most of their acoustic energy occurs at higher frequencies than non-sibilant fricatives. S has the most acoustic strength at around 8,000 Hz, but can reach as high as 10,000 Hz. Has the bulk of its acoustic energy at around 4,000 Hz, but can extend up to around 8,000 Hz. Sibilant types All sibilants are coronal consonants. However, there is a great deal of variety among sibilants as to tongue shape, point of contact on the tongue, and point of contact on the upper side of the mouth. The following variables affect sibilant sound quality and, along with their possible values, are ordered from sharpest to dullest. Tongue shape, groove, alveolopalatal, palatal alveolar, retroflex, place of articulation, dental or dental alveolar, alveolar, postalveolar, palatal, point of contact on the tongue, laminal, closed, laminal non, closed, apical, subapical. Generally, the values of the different variables co-occur so as to produce an overall sharper or duller sound. For example, a laminal dental alveolar grooved sibilant occurs in Polish, and a subapical palatal retroflex sibilant occurs in Toda. Tongue shape The main distinction is the shape of the tongue. Most sibilants have a groove running down the center line of the tongue that helps focus the airstream, but it's not known how widespread this is. In addition, the following tongue shapes are described, from sharpest and highest pitch to dullest and lowest pitched. Hollow. This hollow accepts a large volume of air that is forced through a typically narrow aperture that directs a high-velocity jet of air against the teeth, which results in a high-pitched, piercing, hissing sound. Because of the prominence of these sounds, they are the most common and most stable of sibilants cross-linguistically. They occur in English, where they are denoted with a letter S or Z, as in soon or zone, alveolopalatal, with a convex, V-shaped tongue, and highly palatalized, palatal alveolar, with a domed tongue. These sounds occur in English, where they are denoted with letter combinations such as SH, CH, G, J or C, as in shin, chin, jin and vision, retroflex 
with a flat or concave tongue, and no palatalization. These sounds occur in a large number of varieties, some of which also go by other names. The subapical palatal or through retroflex sounds are the very dullest and lowest pitched of all the sibilants. The latter three postalveolar types of sounds are often known as hushing sounds because of their quality, as opposed to the hissing alveolar sounds. The alveolar sounds in fact occur in several varieties, in addition to the normal sound of English s. Palatalized sibilants can occur with or without raising the tongue body to the palate. Palatalized alveolars are transcribed e.g. s and occur in Russian. They sound similar to the cluster sj occurring in the middle of the English phrase miss you. Lisping. Alveolar sibilants made with the tip of the tongue near the upper teeth have a softer sound reminiscent of the lisping theta sound of English. Think. These sounds are relatively uncommon but occur in some of the indigenous languages of California as well as in the Spanish dialects of eastern Andalusia in cities such as Granada, Huelva, Cordoba, Jaiacutan and Almeria. In these dialects, the lisping sibilant S is the normal pronunciation of the letters S and Z, as well as a C before I or E, replacing the S or theta that occurs elsewhere in Andalusia. Speaking non-technically, the retroflex consonant s sounds somewhat like a mixture between the regular or English of ship and a strong American r, while the alveolopalatal consonant c sounds somewhat like a mixture of English of ship and the sj in the middle of miss you. Place of articulation sibilants can be made at any coronal articulation, i.e., the tongue can contact the upper side of the mouth anywhere from the upper teeth to the hard palate, with the in-between articulations being dentoalveolar, alveolar and postalveolar. Point of contact on the tongue The tongue can contact the upper side of the mouth with the very tip of the tongue, with the surface just behind the tip called the blade of the tongue, or with the underside of the tip. Apical and subapical articulations are always tongue up, with the tip of the tongue above the teeth, while laminal articulations can be either tongue up or tongue down, with the tip of the tongue behind the lower teeth. For more information on these variants and their relation to sibilants, see the article on postalveolar consonants. For tongue down laminal articulations, an additional distinction can be made depending on where exactly behind the lower teeth the tongue tip is placed. A little ways back from the lower teeth is a hollow area in the lower surface of the mouth. When the tongue tip rests in this hollow area, there is an empty space below the tongue, which results in a relatively duller sound. When the tip of the tongue rests against the lower teeth, there is no sublingual cavity, resulting in a sharper sound. Usually, the position of the tip of the tongue correlates with the groove versus hushing tongue shape so as to maximize the differences. However, the palatal alveolar sibilants in the Northwest Caucasian languages such as Ubik are an exception. These sounds have the tongue tip resting directly against the lower teeth, which gives the sounds a quality that Catford describes as hissing hushing. See the article on postalveolar consonants for more information. Symbols in the IPA the following table shows the types of sibilant fricatives defined in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Diacritics can be used for finer detail. For example, apical and laminal alveolars can be specified as S versus S, a dental sibilant as S, a palatalized alveolar as S, and a generic retracted sibilant as S. A transcription frequently used for the sharper quality types of retroflex consonants. There is no diacritic to denote the laminal closed articulation of palatal alveolars in the Northwest Caucasian languages, but they are sometimes provisionally transcribed as SZ. Possible combinations. The attested possibilities with exemplar languages are as follows. Note that the IPA diacritics are simplified. Some articulations would require two diacritics to be fully specified, but only one is used in order to keep the results legible without the need for open-type IPA fonts. 
Also, Ladefidged has resurrected an obsolete IPA symbol, the underdot, to indicate apical post alveolar, and that notation is used here. Carrot 1 These sounds are usually just transcribed as Z. Apical post alveolar and subapical palatal sibilants do not contrast in any language, but if necessary, apical post alveolars can be transcribed with an apical diacritic, as SZ or SZ. Lathfidged resurrects the old retroflex subdot for apical retroflexes, SZ also seen in the literature on e.g. Hindi and Norwegian as the domed articulation of precludes a subapical realization. Whistled sibilants Whistled sibilants occur in speech pathology and may be caused by dental prostheses or orthodontics. However, they also occur phonemically in several southern Bantu languages, the best known being Shona. Using the extended IPA, Shona SV and ZV may be transcribed S and Z. Other transcriptions seen include purely labialized S and Z and labially co-articulated S and Z or S and Z beta. In the otherwise IPA transcription of Shona in Doak, the whistled sibilants are transcribed with non-IPA SZ and TSDZ. Linguistic contrasts among sibilants not including differences in manner of articulation or secondary articulation, some languages have as many as four different types of sibilants. For example, northern Kiang and southern Kiang have a four-way distinction among sibilant affricates, TS, TS, T, TC, with one for each of the four tongue shapes. Toda also has a four-way sibilant distinction, with one alveolar, one palatal alveolar, and two retroflex. The now extinct Tubic language was particularly complex, with a total of 27 sibilant consonants. Not only all four tongue shapes were represented but also both the palatal alveolars and alveolopalatals could additionally appear labialized. Besides, there was a five-way manner distinction among voiceless and voiced fricatives, voiceless and voiced affricates, and adjective affricates. The BZYP dialect of the related Abkhaz language also has a similar inventory. Some languages have four types when palatalization is considered. Polish is one example, with both palatalized and non-palatalized laminal dental alveolars, laminal post alveolar, and alveolopalatal. Russian has the same surface contrasts, but the alveolopalatals are arguably not phonemic. They occur only germinate, whereas the retroflex consonants never occur geminate, which suggests that both are allophones of the same phoneme. Somewhat more common are languages with three sibilant types, including one hissing and two hushing. Mandarin Chinese is an example of such a language. However, other possibilities exist. Serbo-Croatian has alveolar. Palatal alveolar and alveolopalatal afflicted, whereas Basque has palatal alveolar and laminal and apical alveolar fricatives and affricates. Extremely common in languages, such as English, are two sibilant types, one hissing and one hushing. A wide variety of languages across the world have this pattern. Perhaps most common is the pattern, as in English, with alveolar and palatal alveolar sibilants. Modern northern peninsula Spanish has a single apico-alveolar sibilant fricative S, as well as a single palatal alveolar sibilant affricate T. However, there are also languages with alveolar and apical retroflex sibilants and with alveolar and alveolopalatal post-alveolars. Few languages with sibilants are missing the hissing type, but they exist. Middle Vietnamese is normally reconstructed with two sibilant fricatives, both hushing. Some languages have only a single hushing sibilant and no hissing sibilant, such as Southern Peninsula Spanish dialects of the Ciccio type, which have replaced the former hissing fricative with theta, leaving only t. Languages with no sibilants are fairly rare. Most have no fricatives at all or no fricatives apart from h. Examples include most Australian languages, Hawaiian and Rotokas, and what is generally reconstructed for Proto-Bantu. Languages with fricatives but no siblings, however, occur. One is UKUE of Nigeria, which has only the fricatives F, V, H. 
contested definitions. Authors including Chomsky and Halley Group F and V as sibilants. However, they do not have the grooved articulation and high frequencies of other sibilants, and most phonetitians continue to group them together with bilabial, beta, and dental, theta, th, as non-sibilant anterior fricatives. For a grouping of sibilants and f, v, the term strident is more common. The nature of sibilants as so-called obstacle fricatives is complicated. There is a continuum of possibilities relating to the angle at which the jet of air may strike an obstacle. The grooving often considered necessary for classification as a sibilant has been observed in ultrasound studies of the tongue for the supposedly non-sibilant voiceless alveolar fricative theta of English.